It is important to remember that not all COPD is the same. Indeed, there are a range of subtypes, including emphysema. With emphysema, there is abnormal enlargement of airspaces distal to the terminal bronchioles with destruction of the airspace walls. Loss of gas exchange services in the lung, air trapping and hyperinflation results in dyspnea, which negatively affects the quality of life persons with severe emphysema. Not all patients with COPD have emphysema. Approximately 50% do not. But it is critical to evaluate for emphysema in all patients with severe COPD, as emphysema is a risk factor for exacerbations, disease progression, incidence of lung cancer, and mortality associated with lung cancer, especially in active smokers. Emphysema, particularly when localized to the upper lung zones, may have therapeutic implications. Lung volume reduction surgery, LBRS, is a surgical treatment for patients with advanced emphysema, whose dyspnea is poorly controlled with medical therapies and pulmonary rehabilitation. The goal of LBRS is to remove as much of the diseased lung as possible while preserving healthy functioning tissue, and in so doing, improving lung function. The National Emphysema Treatment Trial, NET, evaluated LBRS compared with medical therapy in 1,218 patients with advanced emphysema. Early trial results identified a high-risk group of patients, FEV1 is less than 20% or DLCO is less than 20% predicted, for whom this treatment approach was associated with a higher risk of death, and thus these patients were subsequently excluded from enrollment. NET demonstrated that in a selected patient population, those with upper low predominant emphysema and low exercise tolerance, there were significant benefits of LBRS on long-term mortality, on exercise capacity, on health-related quality of life. The durability of LBRS has been supported by long-term studies. However, adoption of this approach in the United States has been poor. The indications for LBRS are derived from entry criteria from the net include age less than 75, Severe dyspnea despite optimal medical therapy and pulmonary rehabilitation. Longer than six months smoking cessation. A clinical picture consistent with emphysema. An FEV1 after bronchodilators less than 45% predicted. A DLCO diffusing capacity not less than 20% predicted. Hyperinflation, a total lung capacity greater than 100% predicted. A residual volume greater than 150% predicted. Post rehabilitation six minute walk greater than 140 meters hyperinflation on chest x-ray, a high-resolution CT scan confirming severe emphysema, ideally with upper low predominance. Less invasive bronchoscopic techniques have been explored for patients with severe emphysema. Bronchoscopic introduction of a one-way valve into affected parts of the lung blocks air entry, but allows exit of a trapped air, ultimately helping to reduce lung volume. Two such valves are currently FDA approved for patients with severe emphysema. In clinical trials compared with standard medical therapy alone, endobronchial valve placement was associated with improvement in FEV1, quality of life scores, and exercise tolerance. An important finding from initial studies of endobronchial valves in patients with severe emphysema is that no collateral ventilation between lobes, in other words, high fissure integrity, correlated with the success of the valve procedure. Pneumothorax is a complication associated with endobronchial valves, reported in 27 and 29% of patients in the Liberate and Transform studies, respectively. Patient selection criteria for bronchoscopic lung volume reduction depends primarily on the presence of intact fissures and air trapping, as noted by a high residual volume. Lung volume reduction surgery and now bronchoscopic lung volume reduction are examples of therapies aimed for specific types of COPD. As we move away from treating all COPD the same, these techniques give us examples of what the future may look like. Finally, in those patients with very advanced disease who continue to struggle despite a maximum medical regimen, including pulmonary rehabilitation and oxygen therapy, who are not candidates for lung volume reduction, lung transportation remains a possible option. While the five-year mortality is still higher than we would like, there is progress being made. As better immunosuppressive drugs are developed, this option may well improve.